Okay, this is our final video lecture for this particular unit, and it's going to kind of wrap up and look at after the embryo has, um, the blastocyst has implanted itself into the uterine wall, and what entails in the development of finally becoming a fetus. So the first step, and we're going to go back to the cleavage diagram, the development of a new organism, we had said, begins with fertilization. And that is the union of the egg and the sperm, and then it's going to become a zygote, and then go through cleavage, hopefully this sounds familiar, uh, marula, and then blastula. So the mitosis is going undergoing mitosis, uh, the zygote is, and then I just mentioned about the cleavage, and the marula is 32 cells, a ball of 32 cells, and a blastula becomes a blastocyst, um, then that would be a hollow ball. So um, I should have actually made that blastocyst. So more the, the ULA on the end is more defining the stage, and if you put the cyst on the end, that's defining the structure. But I would take either term would be fine with me. After that, it's called gastrula, and this is where that blastula, that hollow ball, is going to start folding in on itself and defining to make layers of tissue, which will then later become organs and systems. So here's what the three layers are, and this is focusing on the embryo side. In just a moment, after I get through these, we're going to look at it actually divides into two parts. One's going to become the embryo, and the other one will develop into the placenta. So the ectoderm, this is on the embryo side, will cover the outermost layer because ecto means outside. So anything that is a covering, skin, which is called your epidermis, hair, nails, and the enamel of your teeth. Now, neurons is part of this ectoderm layer. It's actually like a sublayer. The stage is called neurula. It's very specialized. It focusing, focuses in on the nervous system. So if we look at this diagram, um, this would be the layer, and it concaves, and don't worry about the neural plate and the fold, etc. I, I just want you to see how it goes through and eventually will become the spinal cord. So when it pinches together, it's going to attach right here, and then it will break apart, and then this neural tube, uh, the notochord, that will eventually develop into the spinal cord. So that's that whole process. But this is still part of the ectoderm. Moving in is the mesoderm. Meso means middle. And this is a bulk of all of our internal organs and our systems. So you can read through that list and see that it is primarily almost every system. And then the endoderm, endo means inside layer. And its primarily focus is that digestive system. That's its main function. Mesoderm carries, takes place and takes care of all of the major organs and their systems, except for the digestive system. Okay, so here's a diagram, if we kind of orient ourselves here. So here's a zygote after fertilization. Then we have a blastocyst. Of course, marula would be right between here. And then it would move into gastrula. And then all of these kind of blowouts, if you want to call it that, is describing what's happening at each layer. So the, it's also called the germ cells, the egg and the sperm. So the ectoderm, that's the outermost layer, protective covering. The mesoderm, the middle layer, gives rise to most of our internal organs and the systems. And then the endoderm, um, it is the digestive system, but it does also specialize in certain types of lung cells, uh, the thyroid cells, and the pancreatic cells. But on the exam, um, I'm just going to focus on the digestive system, okay? Um, and then we'll just have the other primary organs listed there. But there are other things that the endoderm does. Okay. So this just kind of shows you, and these were actually the cutouts that I put on each slide, previous slide. So this is the whole image. Um, here is the placenta, okay? And these are the chorionic villi, which help develop into the placenta. Then we have, this will become the umbilical cord. And then each of these layers, that will develop into the embryo. We have something called a yolk sac. This is used for nourishment by the embryo until the umbilical cord is established and functioning. So in humans, uh, we had this term before, the blastocyst 
will actually divide into two parts. The embryo, and I found this image that was really interesting, how the size comparison. So this is a human uh, blastocyst, and you can see here's the hollow ball. And these will individual like dimples, just like a golf ball, that will become the individual cells, eventually tissues, and that's the size of a hair. And then the membranes are going to surround and protect. So that we'd already covered all the layers that are involved in the embryo. Now we're going to look at what is going to be used for protection and surrounding the developing embryo. And there are four main membranes you need to be familiar with, and these will be on the exam. You have the amnion, that's going to make the amniotic sac and is filled with fluid, and that surrounds and supports the embryo during its development. You will have the allantose and parts of the yolk sac. So there's two membranes. We'll get to the yolk sac in just a second. But the allantose and the yolk sac will become, with additional blood vessels, that will become the umbilical cord. Now, I thought this was a really interesting analogy that um, kitchen phone cord, the ones that actually had the cord, not the cordless ones, um, the more you use it, then it tends to get longer and stretched out and longer. Now, what could happen if you have a very active baby moving around, that umbilical cord could get longer and longer and more of a chance of it wrapping around the baby's neck. And oddly enough, that's what happened to Justin. And as a result, I had to have an emergency C-section because every time he would drop down, the umbilical cord would wrap around his neck and it would put his heart into distress. So anyway, I thought that was an interesting analogy. Okay, so back to the membranes. And next you have the chorion or the chorionic villi, and these have villi little projections. This will eventually develop into the placenta. Okay, so down here in this image, we've already talked about the yolk sac, but the chorion or the chorionic villi, depending on which book you pick up, that will develop into the placenta. And that placenta is going to be the lifeline, kind of a filtering system between the mother and the baby. So the baby's going to get food and oxygen and help eliminate waste. So it's really that placenta and the umbilical cord that helps the baby to develop. Then we have the yolk sac, which we said in addition to the allantos will make the umbilical cord. But before the umbilical cord is established, that yolk sac, its function is to provide nourishment for the embryo. And then once it's established, then it becomes part of the membrane and twists and turns into the cord. Okay, so here is my uterus. Notice how much it has changed. And obviously the cervix is still closed because we have not started the birth process. And the pink structure here is the umbilical cord, and so it's kind of wrapped around the baby. And then the placenta is attached to the uterine wall. And just depending where that egg um, excuse me, the zygote and the blastula went down into the uterus and where it implanted is where that placenta will be established. So it could be on this side, it can be on the top. Um, we start getting into uh, some real issues if it's covering the birth canal, in which case you'd have to have a C-section to um, birth the baby. So if I come over here, see how rich the blood vessels are. So this portion is the mom. Okay, that's attached to the mom. And then these are the portion that's for the baby. And then the umbilical cord will come and attach. And then it exchanges and filters, like I already said, food and waste and oxygen. Here's an actual image. These are just amazing membranes. So here's the amniotic sac. Here's the yolk sac. So the yolk sac is still pretty large, and so that tells you that the Umbilical cord is not yet developed, so but we can see that it is developing right here. Here's the chorionic villi, and so it is starting to develop into the placenta. So somewhere on this left side, it will should be attached to the mother's uterine wall. You can see the rich blood vessels. Okay. So some terms in order to distinguish, if you're talking about an embryo, if you're talking about a fetus, they usually indicate the first eight weeks it is classified as an embryo, and from eight weeks to birth it is then a fetus, and that will be a question on the test. Trimesters, uh, periods of every three months. I know you've heard that several times, first, second, third trimester. When cells differentiate, 
think we had this a long time ago, first semester. That is where you have specialization of the cells. So that is during the ectoderm, mesoderm, and the endoderm, where those layers are becoming specialized, heart cells, liver cells, etc., all those tissues. By the end of the first trimester is when most of the organs has formed. Now, that doesn't mean that they are functional, but because uh, some of them are not completely functional like the lungs until the last trimester. But it is the last trimester where you have a lot of rapid growth and the maturation or the organs are maturing. And it is the lungs that is the last to develop. And so that's why premature babies, they do have respiratory problems if they're born too soon because it's really that last few weeks that they mature. Okay, now this I'm not going to ask you questions on labeling. The things I've highlighted in bold, um, they could come in as a question on the test. The other things um, are just interesting facts. So kind of point out, I'm going to read a few things, kind of watch how the mother's body has changes and how the um, embryo and the fetus develops and grows and how it changes structure. So the first month, first four weeks, um, is already the heart, the digestive system, the backbone, spinal cord are forming, and then you have the placenta has become intact. In the second month, the heart is functioning by this time. Some other little things, the boys, you can see their penis, um, eyes, nose, lips, ears. So all of those things are forming, even the teeth. Uh, they're not obviously erupted yet, but they are there. Okay, during the third month is where you can actually hear the heartbeat. So it is the third month. There might be a question. Um, of course, you need a special instrument called a Doppler. The nails are developing. Um, the fetus is actually starting to look like a human form. Toes are fully developed, and so are the eyes. Third month, uh, it's getting a little bit bigger, about seven inches long, six, seven ounces. You can now identify the sex. Um, it is kind of a, has a hair, kind of a fuzz to it. It actually can suck its thumb. They've had that on ultrasound before, some images. The fifth month, um, there's a soft woolly hair, and sometimes that's on after birth, and it looks like it's kind of grayish or kind of a pale white, and it's called lanugo, and it's a protective coating. Um, also, the internal organs are maturing, and you can actually start to have eyelashes. Six months, skin is covered now with a different coating, the vernix, um, and also the baby can start to hiccup. And sometimes, at least I experience it, that sometimes I would feel that, a little hiccup, like a little jolt. Seventh month, the organs are still maturing. Now we're starting to form fat on the baby. Now, if the baby is born at this time, it is premature. And I mentioned that early just because um, the, the, the lungs have not fully developed yet, so it cannot breathe on its own. The eighth month overall, this is when you have rapid growth. Most of the organs are developed, again, except for the lungs. Lots of kicking, not much moving around, not much room. Um, you'll notice now that the baby is kind of oriented itself downward. The head is in moving toward the birth canal. And in the ninth month, where it settles in, getting ready for birth, uh, and at this point in time, the lungs are fully developed, and it could survive outside the mother. So hopefully you kind of looked and watched how the baby developed and how the mother's body changed. I don't know if you've noticed, but the mom's back, how you have that sway because of the weight, and that's why moms have such, you know, back pain all the time, even in the hips, because the baby is moving down into the canal. So we will watch a birth video at the end of this unit. And again, if you have any questions, please come see me in class, and we can sit down and discuss it. Thank you. Have a good day.